So here next to me is the Wondermaker ZR or ZR. It's a 4 to 1 3D printer with a big volume. But what do I think about it? So let's find out. Right here, Zachary 3D Prints. Hey, Zach here, and welcome to this video. I'm looking a little bit weird with my microphone, but what is not weird is this open, big size 3D printer from Wondermaker, the Wondermaker ZR. Well, wasn't this a Kickstarter campaign printer? Yes, it was, together with the ZR Ultra. That one is a tool changer. This one isn't, and surprise, surprise to me, when I did the Zach React video, this 3D printer, I thought it was a optional thing. No, this one is a standalone printer. A standalone, four colors in one single hat. Not a tool changer, this one is a standalone product. But um, let's see the unboxing and setup of this 3D printer. And in the meantime, I'm going to talk all about the details about this 3D printer. So the Wondermaker ZR, this is the single tool hat with four colors to print with. with a printing volume of 300 times 300 times 300, this machine is capable of printing bigger models with multicolors. This 3D printer has a hardened steel nozzle with a temperature up to 300 degrees Celsius. It's a direct drive extruder and with the temperatures up to 300 degrees Celsius, you can print with ease PLA and PEG if you want to step up your game. Uh, there are some enclosures for this 3D printer that you can fully enclose this 3D printer and go to the temperatures up to 300 degrees C. Printing ABS and some other cool engineering stuff material. On the right hand side, we have a multicolor managing system. Four spools on the right hand side, they are sharing two spools on one holder. And then on the other side, we have the same kind of situation. In between, there is the filament runout detection, which is amazing and very much needed, especially if you're printing bigger models. Then we have the managing system, the ones that, you know, choose which kind of filament you are going to print next with. Yeah, it's it's a managing system. We can call it CFS, we can call it MMU, we can call it AMS or ACE or whatever the name would be for the Wondermaker ZR. I think that this one is handling it pretty well. Then we have the four PTFA tubes going into the hot end with a four to one adapter hub or whatever the name is going to be called, going directly into the direct drive extruder. There are some fans as well. There, there is a, inside of the tool head, there is a fan for the hot end. And on the front, we have a big part cooling fan. And of course, on the left hand side, a big auxiliary fan, making sure that the part is getting cooled well enough. Then we have also the auto leveling and one touch calibration. It is all working well. Well, the print speed of this 3D printer, and I really like that Wondermaker is honest about it. They have a maximum print speed of 300 millimeters per second and a travel speed of 600 millimeters per second with the acceleration of 20,000 millimeters per second square. And the flow, 32 millimeters cubed per second flow rate. The bed can be heated up to 100 degrees C. And it is also fast. On the back side, we have the poop chute, the purge bucket, and they are using a silicon brush in order to brush the leftover filaments away and everything is being, you know, purged out. Full metal frame, solid and durable. It is a well looking machine. This printer runs on Clipper. The flavor of Clipper is fluid and it is working great. So yes, this is the Wondermaker ZR, a open single one head, single tool head with four colors. Bigger size, 300, 300, 300, 300 degrees C, 300 millimeters per second print speed, 600 millimeters travel speed. And yeah, it's open. No problem whatsoever because in the end, in the end, it's what the printer can do, right? The one the maker, ZR, it's doing what it's supposed to do. If you are want to printing, if you want to print some props like helmets or breastplates or some other cool stuff that you are very into. I think this printer is big enough to do that, to do it. Quarks, why? But what do I think about it? Well, this is a prototype. I don't know for sure if this is going to be the final version. I know some other people will have this and are testing it. So there might be some small changes, some improvements. But from what I have seen, what this printer can do, I think it's it's great for a first printer that they br brought to the market. I know there is also going to be the Ultra, the tool changer of this type of printer. And it does look like the Flash Forge 85X, but who cares? It's 
it's a 3D printer. It looks like a 3D printer. So I don't see anything bad in that. How the printer performs, how it does, how the company as a brand is. So big space, the build plate, the adhesion on the build plate, so far I cannot really complain. My first print on this were the test models that came on the USB thumb drive, a small cube with, the, with a uh, bigger perch tower. Well, this one is from a different model, but I, I had to laugh about it. Uh, people on the stream did see the, the little tiny cube with four colors and the perch tower. Funny, sure, no problem. I printed a multicolor Benji. I'm looking for it, I cannot find it. But also the Benji came out nicely, also four colors, also a perch tower that is as big as the perch tower. No, the perch tower is so, so big as the Benji itself. Makes total sense, I guess. Also that came out very nicely. I couldn't find any weird, some weird lines, not really ringing or ghosting on, on the model. Um, then I printed a kind of spatula with a blade, what, what you need to put in, in there. Also came out nicely. Then I had a little clock on my hot end. I don't know what really caused it, some jamming, some something else, but I, I was also using some older filament. So it can happen. Hey, no problem. In the weekend, I did do the unclogging, went pretty simple, straightforward, easy to solve. Then I slapped everything back together, loaded up some other filaments and started continue printing. One of the models that I did was on the Orca Slicer. I made my custom profile for it. I will make a video later about that so that you can see exactly if you are getting one of those machines and one I maker wasn't able to have a standard profile already in Orca Slicer. No problem, you can follow along. I'm, I'm, I'll make sure you can do that as well. So my first print, of course, to test it out and see if all settings are good, I printed this Benji. Same result, looking nice. He had a little tiny bit of stringing, but no problem there. Came out nicely. So I was like, okay, now it is working. I want to print in something in multicolor because I've got some filaments or some leftover filaments. Let's uh, let's try something from Wexter. Ewok, mini Ewok. Ewok. I know these are not the right colors. I'm sorry. I didn't want to do a 17 hour print. And this was like 10 hour print. I had to swap filaments because one part was purple and then purple was empty and I had to switch to blue. But further, the colors are spot on, except for the moment that I switch between the filaments. No problem. I don't mind this. What I do mind is the filament waste, of course. But then, if you see the pile that I saw yesterday, I think in the end, I ended up using more than the model itself. But I think it's also because of user error. I think it's completely my side. So therefore I say to Wondermaker, please make sure to have some more slicer profiles on Orca Slicer or some of the other popular slicer programs that people might use. So talking about slicers, let's talk about the firmware. This 3D printer runs on Clipper. If you go to the IP address of, your, of the printer, you will find directly a fluid screen. So that is amazing. You can go directly to the Clipper screen and follow along what your printer is doing. So I really like that. Some other printer brands, they made something very fancy, but in the end, this clipper running on the background and this printer, you can follow along. There is a camera in there, so you can make some nice time lapses. Further, this printer has also on the inside of the frame, also an LED light that you can switch on or can switch off. Very convenient, very nice. At this moment, I'm printing another model from Wexter, something that I really like, very techy, very, you know, sci-fi kind of thing. It's a, it's a cybernetic skull from wax in three colors, black, white, blue. But if I'm looking to the infill, the infill looks gray because I'm using mainly now white and black. And if you're mixing colors together, what do you do you get? Of course, gray. So that is going fine, but I had this little issue. And that is also the part where I'm going to talk about something from the spool holders. Now, I this, this uh, yesterday I put a new spool of filament for using white. So what this printer does is retracting on the moment it's swapping from different filaments. Now, I hope that Wondermaker is going to do something that, you know, buffers it a little bit, making sure that the filament doesn't get tangled while extruding and retracting because everything is now hanging under the printer or under the spool. So if it is going to extrude again, it's going to 
pull on the uh, wire that is maybe in between the spools and then you will get some jamming. So this printer was like 10 hours into the print and when I get back home, it was still 10 hours in the print and I had to do something. So the whole day, it was waiting for Daddy Zach to come and take some actions. Besides the fact it has a filament run out detection, it has also a detection that if something is not right, that it pauses. Very cool. Nice feature. Yeah, I think that this is it for what I have to say about the Wondermaker ZR so far. As a so to close this video off, because my other brand new camera, it was uh, screaming like, I'm too warm, I'm too warm, I need to cut out. Well, anyways, I want to finish this off. Amazing 3D printer. I don't know what the official retail price is going to be. On the website of Wondermaker, you will find more information about this 3D printer. This was my first impressions and thoughts and ideas about this 3D printer. So I'm very happy with this one. This is going to be in more videos and some other things. And uh, let me know in the comments, what do you think about the Wanamaker ZR? Hey, if you made it this far in this video, you are amazing. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, click like. And also big thanks to these amazing supporters of the channel. Nonstick, Simon Snow, and Montana Maker. You are amazing. See you next time.